Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Every question in Question Time today went from the opposition, went to the gap, the gap between the announcements from this government and the delivery. And, and we've worked something out, whether it's, whether it's aged care, whether it's JobKeeper, whether it's debt and deficit, whether it's superannuation. If there's something that you really don't want to happen, how do you make sure something won't happen? You get the Prime Minister to announce it. Because if you're really worried about something, I'd imagine this is a message to lobbyists all around the country that they're working with the department, they're working towards an announcement. If at any moment the public servants say to you, oh, we could get the Prime Minister to announce this, stop it, run a mile, don't let it happen. Because in every instance, and they don't seem to understand, normally parliamentary debate goes back and forth as to whether or not the right programs have been announced. But with here, with this government and with this Prime Minister, ever since he said, I'm ambitious for him, yeah. we've really understood the difference between what he announces and what he does within a couple of days. The Treasurer today was asked, and he thought he was boasting. It's really interesting when someone's asked about, well, there's a gap between what you announce and what you do, and he stands up and says, well, let me show you the numbers. And so when asked, you promised $314 billion in economic support, what have you done? The numbers that he reported to the parliament added up to just over a quarter of the announcement. Just over a quarter of the announcement. And then we had another Dixer from them today. Like it wasn't just our questions that were making this case. It was, it was in their Dixers as well, where they stood up and boasted that there would now be an additional $30 billion for JobKeeper, taking it to $101 billion. So they've added $30 billion, and it's still $30 billion less than what they originally announced. They originally announced, they originally announced that they would help 6 million Australians. They then decided to design the rules to make sure that 6 million Australians were not eligible. They cut out a million casuals. They cut out the visa workers. They cut out local government. They cut out arts and entertainment workers. They cut out aviation workers. They cut out people who work at universities. And then they said, oh, isn't this great? We don't need to spend as much money as we thought we did. They gave hope to six million Australians, and they let down half that number. It's a bit late now to be boasting that somehow they're adding extra support when it's still less. It's still less than the original announcement, and that gap is the story that is told in unemployment queues around Australia. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, we had the Prime Minister boasting that aged care apparently not a real problem at the moment. Not a real problem. And why do we know it's not a problem? Because he could rattle off 14 announcements. 14 announcements. If you've got your list of announcements and we still find somebody with ants crawling in an open wound, that tells the story of neglect. That tells the story of the gap between announcement and delivery. We heard the same when they thought they got off scot-free on the, on the Ruby Princess inquiry from New South Wales. Well, they said, oh, no, we've been told that we weren't in fact responsible, it was the state government. But here's the problem. The problem was they'd actually announced that they were going to take responsibility. The Prime Minister had stood up and announced, and I quote, that the cr cruise ships would be placed, I quote, directly under the command of the Australian Border Force. The only reason they did OK in that Royal Commission was because they would never delivered on what they announced. The only reason it wasn't their responsibility was because they hadn't done what they said they would do, which is going to lead us to what will be one of the defining broken promises of this government. Because we all know where they're headed on superannuation. We all know exactly what's happening on superannuation. And we know it's going to be the attack on retirees in all three ways. In freezing the pension, in stuffing up aged care, and then in attacking superannuation. Because of course we know they're going to claw back on superannuation. How do we know this? Because in November 2018 the Prime Minister announced they wouldn't. 
In November 2018, the Prime Minister made an announcement and he said, no, 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 it's all legislated, it's going to go up to 12 per cent, working people will, will get their money. Well, they won't. And the backbench started the drumbeat, and we know it's nothing to do with the pandemic. They've been in for seven years. This was meant to be coming in all of that time, and working Australians haven't been getting the money. And they've always argued, oh yeah, but you know, if you get the superannuation increase, then you miss out on the pay rise. Well, for the life of this government, they haven't been getting a pay rise or a superannuation increase. And that's been the lived experience of working Australians. We had yesterday a fine first speech from the new member for Eda Monero. A fine first speech. And let's not forget a big story of Christy McBain, of the member for Eda Monero, becoming known as a national figure, was in her standing up to this government and saying, we need support for bushfire-ravaged communities. And when they needed support, what did the government give them instead? It gave them an announcement. It gave them an announcement. Announced on the 11th of May, a $650 million boost for bushfire recovery. So given that they announced it, you know, the Treasurer before I was critical that it was only about a quarter of what they announced. Well, for bushfire recovery, one and a half per cent of what they announced Shame. spent. Yeah. Now, bushfire recovery is something where people are dealing with having lost everything now, not just in their in what they go through personally, but what entire communities go through. Of all the areas for there to be a gap between announcement and delivery, I've got to say that's one of the most offensive. Don't announce $650 million if you have no intention of spending it. Don't announce that you're going to help six million Australians with a wage subsidy if you only have the intention of helping half that number. Don't announce that you've got 14 new announcements on aged care if we're then going to get Royal Commission reports titled Neglect. Don't announce that the most important thing in fighting the, the coronavirus is going to be for everyone to download the app. Download the app and then find out after all this time it's helped us make contact, trace contact, on 14 occasions. 14. So you get millions of Australians following the advice of the Prime Minister. Why do they follow the advice? Well, he made the announcement. He told us this was what we had to do. Download the app, get, right, get out from under the doona, and all you have to do is keep the distance, wash your hands, download the app. They don't tend to run that run of three anymore. I don't know what happened to the app, but it certainly didn't do any of the things that were in the announcement. And then, Order. The member for Cowan. And then the responses we had today from the Minister for Health to the Shadow Minister for Health. Now, he said he, there was one thing that he would not say when he was saying, oh, but it's an agreement, oh, and it's a deal. But he wouldn't say how many vaccines are now guaranteed for Australia. Because because the answer is zero. The answer is zero. And so the Treasurer would hide behind words and hide behind announcements, but once again the delivery was where it fell short. Now we, I guess we know this from a mob that when they were in opposition promised that every single budget from the time they came into office would be a surplus budget. We've now been here for a seven-year-old government that the next election is going to ask to be a 12-year-old government and never will have once turned a surplus budget. They had doubled the debt before anyone had heard of coronavirus. So don't hide behind the virus in terms of this. The thing that we know, it's not just, oh, you know, they overpromise and underdeliver. No, no, it's not even as complicated as that. They make announcements to avoid doing anything because all they care about is the marketing. And I tell you what, people out there don't live in a marketing world. People live with a government that either delivers or it doesn't. And we have, for seven long years now, a government that fails to deliver.